Oh, hi! We didn't see you come in! <laughs> Welcome! We are Jordan and Ryan from Aeonic Impulse, and today we are talking about... And there's also that guy. And <laughs> today we are talking about part six of our debut album, A Night for the Troubled. Part six is View of the Sunrise, and there's a lot we can say about this song, so we're going to try our best to keep it brief. Um... <laughs> Even though the song is... <laughs> <laughs> New take, new take, new take. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so with View of the Sunrise, um, as we talked in the previous video, we, we already had four songs for our debut album. We had Regretful Insomnia, Staring at Static, Existing Within the Rem, and Awaken Away. And those four songs were getting played together live for a good period of time as... A the whole Sleep Saga. The Sleep Saga, as we were Ooh. calling it at the time. And uh, that was going to be it, and those were going to be on our debut album with a couple other songs that we, we'd already written, like Hidden Truths and Song Called Walls. But eventually I had to muck things up and make things longer. Um, and the reason behind that was, around that time I was getting into a style of music called post-rock, which is an instrumental, ambient kind of soundscape style of music. And it was really inspirational to me because of the attention to guitar tones. Um, you know, some of my favorite guitarists are all about tones, David Gilmore, Eric Johnson, I felt this was like the next logical step, so at the same time I was changing my tone to become more ambient and redid all the songs and did them in a more spacious tone sound, I also wanted to do an actual straight up post-rock song. And uh, between talking with Ryan we actually got the idea of maybe doing like a bookend, closing and opening the album with post-rock songs. And then we eventually came up with these titles, View of the Sunrise, <coughs> View of the Sunset. So we had the ideas, now it's just about getting the songs to actually take shape. Um, with sun, Sunrise, uh, I was very inspired by how in post-rock a lot of songs would be played with movie clips. And uh, the music would complement what the movie clips were saying, and I really wanted to do something like that. And uh, so the original idea of View of the Sunrise was that there was going to be movie clips throughout the whole song. Uh, we were using clips from all kinds of movies, and uh, it was this nine minute thing where we would just keep, we would basically jam, like there was no structure to it at first. Um, and we actually did play like one or two shows where we did it that way with all the sound clips, and all the jamming, and we would change from section to section based on when the clips would start and stop, and then Gasper would kind of come in, in and out throughout the uh, song, doing these like oohs and ahs and wordless Ooh. vocals and stuff. Um, uh. Over time, that had to be changed, because as we tried to start getting the rights to certain sound clips, a lot of people didn't get back to us, or they didn't want the clip to be taken out of the context of the whole movie, uh, so we really were left with one clip, but luckily that was the one we wanted the most, which was the Great, Dic uh, Great Dictator speech by Charlie Chaplin. So we had that at the beginning of the song go for about three minutes, and then we had all this left over time, so the rest of the strong song became a little bit more structured, and then we wrote parts, and then we um, had Gasper continue his oohs and ahs over that. And that worked for a little while, but then we, deci um, we decided again, maybe there could be a little bit more structure with what Gasper was doing. So I went, uh, I went in my room and I wrote some lyrics and I had a full page of lyrics for the song. And then I basically went to the next band practice and showed Gasper these lyrics and he picked and chose what he liked and he, and he me messed around with them a bit. And then we had like three lines of lyrics out of that whole page of uh, paper uh, that Gasper sings in the song and then continued with like oohs and ahs in between. So the song became more structured um, from the jam session it started with, full, filled with uh, sound clips, eventually it became the sound clip and then Gasper and then the big finish. And that really is how the song took shape. I'm gonna pass it over to Ryan and see if he has anything to say about it. I mean, you you pretty much said everything. Um, let's see. I mean, apart from the legal aspect of getting that song down, that that was a lot of fun. I spent about 
a year and yeah, a half. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Voice, voice from nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I spent about a year and a half uh, just back and forth with Chaplin's people, uh, just you know, sending them drafts of the song, having them come back to me with it, and it was just like, I, I'm just happy that they, you know, they were very professional. They were, you know had no problems answering questions, they always wanted to hear updates on the song, and it's just an absolute pleasure working with them. It was, I gotta tell you, a ton of hard work, I would never really gone into that much detail for, for legal stuff before, I think I still have a couple things to get through with them, even, even now, but I mean, it just gives you a little insight on how uh, the business side of this whole uh, industry is, it's, it's very... There's a lot of reading involved, uh, a lot of contractors. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, I I'm so happy it did go through. It was all worth the way we pretty much yeah, like Jordan said, wrote this entire song around that speech. So it 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 just feels really good that we were able to achieve you know getting it, and honestly couldn't be any happier with it musically. You know, we all kind of. Uh, Jordan, Jordan explained the lyric side of it. Musically, we all, you know, like I said, it was a jam session. We would all just kind of throw our own riffs in there, and it would just keep expanding and evolving, and, you know, we'd just keep jamming off of it, and pretty much everything, at least that I was doing, remained the same without, uh, throughout the song, just because my, my stuff was very simplistic. I took, like, the whole, you know, repeating lines and then trying to, like, slightly differ, uh, slightly make them a bit different. Make them a bit slightly different. <laughs> I am terrible with English right now. <laughs> we but, get the idea, but yes, yes, <laughs> I just, you know, tweak them a little bit as time goes on. So, you know, I'd be playing one riff, I'd add a note to it, I'd change up the tone a little bit, I'd maybe do a little tapping section here or there, fool around with that, and yeah, I mean, it was... It was a really fun song to work with, and it, it, after, I mean, it just leaves you feeling, feeling done after you play it, which is another thing I kind of like about it. It, it, I mean, because it, playing the song itself, you know, the riffs themselves aren't that hard, but it just feels like you're putting so much energy into it, and it just feels like, it, it just drains you of all that energy, but in a good way, if, if that makes any sense. But yeah, it, it definitely gave this the album a sort of a, uh, you know, a, a, it made it it made it uh, just final. It, it wrapped things up in a really nice way, and I I couldn't be more proud of it. Yeah, uh, I know all of us have that feeling where after we play it, we put so much emotion into it that we all are left like cleansed or drained. Like and um, that's why it's. All, all of us really enjoy playing that song and hearing that song and um, but also we've been noticing that that song is getting a lot of good response from people who are listening to the album and that really means a lot to us because there's so many ideas going into that song in the speech that Charlie Chaplin says and then the lyrics that Gasper says I mean it, it especially with that speech being so applicable even though it was written in 1940 how it still applies so well today. We wanted that with Gasper's lyrics as well. Um, the, I mean, this the lyric, the clip applies to war, but then there's also like it could be about relationships or like internal thoughts, dealing with yourself, dealing with your mind. It really it ties into the whole dream aspect and everything. So we're really proud of how this song kind of it has a specific idea, but it also is kind of left open to interpretation. And we're really, really excited and glad that it's getting such good feedback from the people who are listening to the album and say, like, oh, that's my favorite song, or that song brought brought me to tears. Like, I've heard a couple people say that, and honestly, like, you know, that couldn't mean more. So, very happy um, how this song came out. It was a lot of, um, it took a lot of time from jamming to dealing with the legal stuff, but we're very happy with the finished product. And, uh... Like the song, this video was very long as well. Yes. <laughs> yes. So with that, this is Ryan, I'm Fernando, and Jordan's sitting over there. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's right, right? Yeah, well, sure, let's go with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, sure, okay. And uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs>